and I'm the artistic and general director of the theater center. And I proudly led this organization for eight years. Today, I'm delighted to welcome you all here to celebrate the official groundbreaking ceremony of our new permanent home. For over 30 years, the theater center has played a key role as a national performing arts incubator. We believe that research and development in the cultural sector is at the heart of a healthy arts ecology. By providing space, subsidy, and mentorship to our next generation of arts leaders, we help shape the future of performance works on our mainstream stages. The Theatre Centre has inhabited over 10 performance venues across the city. From the Danforth, to King Street, to the Poor Alex. Today we mark the beginning of a long-awaited homecoming in this awesome building behind me, in the centre of a vibrant West Queen West community, a community the Theatre Centre has called our home for 23 years. Uh, the lead-up to this moment is the work of many, many of whom are here today. I see a lot of people here who've made the Theatre Centre what it is today. Without their belief in a vision of a fully equipped arts research laboratory and the generosity of many, many important donors and our federal, provincial and municipal governments, the Theatre Centre would not be here today. We are delighted to have representatives from every level of government with us to celebrate this truly incredible milestone for our country, our province and our city. Please join me in welcoming Senator Don Meredith from the federal government to share some brief remarks. Thank you so much, Franco. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here this morning. <laughs> That's the reverend coming out of me. <laughs> Councilor Bello, Franco, Bonnie, Lucille Rock, Mr. Kevin Hellefin, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Madame de Monsieur, I'm pleased to be here today on behalf of Honorable James Moore, Minister of Canadian Heritage and Official Languages. Throughout his 30-year history, the Theatre Centre has given us opportunities to enjoy innovative theatre, dance, and a multidisciplinary arts performances. Today we have an opportunity to celebrate the Centre's future home, a venue that will enhance the vibrant arts community in this city. Our government is proud to have contributed $1.8 million to the renovations that will transform this former Carnegie Library building into a permanent home for the Theater Center. And Franco, no more moving. <laughs> and an exciting new performing arts center in the city of Toronto. We know how essential the arts and culture are to our communities and our identity and our economy. The cultural sector employs more than 630,000 people in Canada and contributes more than $49 billion to our gross domestic product. Supporting arts and culture is absolutely essential to keeping our economy on track. Yeah. And this is, thank you. And this is even more important, ladies and gentlemen, as we start the five-year countdown to Canada's 150th birthday in 2017. En tant que nous avons been anniversary leading up to the 150th anniversary of our Confederation in 2017. Cet anniversary nous relons une nouvelle permet de nous avoir défini et tant que Canadien. On the road to 2017, let us continue to celebrate all the things that make Canada great. So I commend today the Theatre Centre on its exceptional work over the last number of years, and I thank all those who are making this contribution to today and the future of this centre a great success and a great stability for the city. Thank you, and God bless you, and God bless this great city of ours. Thank you, Marco. Um, thank you, Senator Don Merritt, uh, for being with us here today. Um, please join me in welcoming Lucille Rock from the Ontario Trillium Foundation, representing the provincial government, to share some brief remarks. Thank you. 
Thank you, Franco. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and the friends of the uh, Theatre Centre. Ça me fait plaisir d'être ici avec vous aujourd'hui. Um, I've been invited to uh, say a few words on behalf of the Foundation, and I'm very pleased to do that. And I've also been asked by Minister Chan to, um, to say a few words as well on his behalf. Mr. Chan loves these kinds of events, and he's typically here. Unfortunately, this morning we found out he's ill, so um, I will convey some of his thoughts uh, to you on the, on the uh, theater center. Um, Minister Chan views the theater center as one of the city's oldest, most enduring, and most respected theater development center. And he's asked me to convey to you how pleased he is that you found a new home in the heart of this vibrant cultural scene that is Queen West neighborhood. He's also asked me to express his view that the government is proud, very proud to support this important project and that the province recognizes the value of what arts and culture brings to our society as they enhance our quality of life and obviously our economy. Speaking for myself, I'd like to recognize the Theatre Centre's contribution to the community, to the uh, community. And it's really a pleasure to formally congratulate everyone involved with the Theatre Centre on receiving this 18-month, uh, $500,000 community capital fund grant. This will help, obviously, towards the expense of renovating the space. And I was telling someone as we were gathered inside, I love these old library buildings, and I'm so pleased that this library building will once again become a public space and the heart of the community. Um, now, in order to qualify for a community capital fund grant, recipients have to be able to indicate that they've been able to find the other 50% of the grant. And I must congratulate the Theater Center uh, people because in this environment, it's really not easy to get funding. And so very, very pleased. Congratulations to all of you. We, um, at the foundation, we've been given the opportunity to, uh, to allocate $50 million over the past couple of years to a community capital grant fund. And we've been very pleased to be able to do that on behalf of the government. And what's particularly satisfying is when we see the kinds of projects that the fund is able to, uh, to support. So congratulations to the Theater Center. I wish you success with your work. And I hope that when you're, uh, when you're finished that you invite us back. <laughs> we'd, like to, uh, we'd like to see the finished product, so to speak. So thank you very much. The government and the Ontario Trillium Foundation, um, I'd like to uh, give this plaque to uh, Franco uh, on behalf of the government. Thank you very much. I, um, I would be remiss uh, if I were not to mention uh, the uh, province of Ontario's contribution to this uh, capital campaign, which is $1.2 million. <laughs> I just also want to personally thank the Honorable uh, Michael Chan, um, Minister, uh, the Honorable Minister Glenn Murray, and uh, Minister Shirelli as well for their hard work in making this happen. It's been Herculean in our efforts, honestly, <laughs> um, in supporting this uh, campaign. And I just thank you, thank you so much. And please, I'd like to share, share a few words. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm going to miss our monthly meetings with uh, 20 people around the table to make sure that this was going to come to fruition. Um, it's great to see so many people here today, um, and it's even greater to recognize so many faces. Um, it just proves how the arts community comes together around such important projects such as this one, but also as this community comes together. Let's not forget that arts has been in this neighborhood for a long, long time. To the point that it started attracting developers to this neighborhood. <laughs> but the community was smart enough to make sure that they could coexist and that we could have some benefits coming out of uh, these new buildings and welcoming a new neighborhood while continuing to have the arts in here. And that's why I couldn't go without thanking the residents of this neighborhood. 
people like Activate Team, some of the people I see, Charles here, Kim, I see so many people here that are made this uh, possible. And I see the former Councillor of the area, Adam Jambroni here. Thank you, Adam, for joining us today. This all started while he was here. And I would like to acknowledge our MP as well, Andrew Cash. Thank you for joining us today as well. And I think that's uh, by bringing people together, by bringing the community together, that's how we're able to have such great projects, maintain our heritage, continue to have arts in this community, continue to make sure that we're going to have arts live through our Artscape lofts, work through our theater center here, enjoy our community through our new park that is going to be built, uh, uh, that is going to be arts oriented, and continue to even work with our Toronto Media and Arts Cluster that is going to be opening here uh, in the new 2-6 Lisgar. There's going to be a huge arts cluster in this neighborhood. And this is a statement that this community thanked our artists, wants to keep our artists, and wants to see them thrive in our city. So I think that Ward 18 is very supportive of our arts community. That's the message that I take here from here today. Thank you for coming here. We'll be with you all the way. We want you to be in our community and we'll be supporting you at City Hall. Um, uh, the mayor asked me to uh, bring a scroll on his behalf because he couldn't make it to the event. So Frank, I'd like to present um, Members of Toronto City Council uh, extend warmest congratulations to the Theatre Centre on the official groundbreaking for its new centre at the former Carnegie Library. Toronto is strong, vibrant and progressive, due in large part to the creativity and talent of our city's residents. The Theatre Centre develops, develops, presents and produces live performances as is and is committed to providing a space for artists to make their artistic vision a reality. Today's groundbreaking ceremony at the former Carnegie Library will provide a theater center with a permanent home and allow artists to thrive in one of the city's historic buildings. Best wishes for much success. Mayor Rob Ford, Councillor Annabella. Um, leadership. Yeah, I got a call. Um, leadership underscores the strength and success for every major organizational milestone. And I'm now delighted to have our campaign chair, Michelle Fadani, and our honor. Hi. Um, I'm Don. Oops, I'm going to raise this a little. I must say I love this podium on Queen Street. Uh, I'm going to propose that this stays here and people can just come up like a speaker's corner and speak whenever they have something to say. And I'm sure the neighbors will love this new proposal. Um, I'm Don McKellar. I'm a writer and actor and producer of uh, movies and plays and made a lot of movies and plays and won awards like the Tony, for instance, which is relevant because it's for theater. I, it's awkward for me to go through the whole list right here. Um, I should have given maybe a longer introduction for Franco to read. Um, but right here, today I'm here as an honorary campaign chair. I'm really excited to hold this position. I've never been the chair of anything before, much less an honorary chair. They tell me that the honorary thing is because I didn't bring a million dollars to the table, much less, in fact, so I'm just an honorary chair at the table, which I'm perfectly happy with. My, um, the path to being honorary chair is a long one for me. It began many, many years ago um, with my first pro professional productions up at, up at the Poor Alex which was uh, the home at the time for the Theatre Centre. Uh, many years ago, I was one of a group of homeless actors and companies uh, who they took in, and um, we did some shows there. Uh, a group of us founded the Toronto Fringe Festival because we had nowhere to perform. Uh, we got a good response. I founded a theatre company there with my friends, um, Daniel Brooks, who went on to become one of the most esteemed directors in town, and Tracy Wright, who went on to become one of the most esteemed and respected actors in town, and eventually my wife. Um, not necessarily the pinnacle of her career, but a, a happy moment for the two of us. Um, she, Tracy was a, a very um, 
an actor with enormous integrity and um, she was passionately committed to experimental and uh, innovative theater and she was right to the end of her life um, I remember in the last days her in a bed in our living room uh, a hospital bed in our living room working on a new show uh, with her friend Tina von Ershort who's here from Belgium today she's here somewhere there she is um, uh, and she died right at right when this campaign was kicking off. Franco came to me and said that they wanted to honor her somehow with this new initiative he was thinking about. Um, and I, I was excited right away. Tracy wasn't the kind of person that really liked plaques or monuments. But when he talked about the new theatre centre building, I was excited because I remembered a lot of conversations I had with Tracy, uh, rants actually, uh, whenever she, she she spent the last ten years of her life, most of her work was touring uh, theaters in Europe and other continents, going to theater festivals, doing experimental work, and whenever she came home, she she lamented the fact she had no home here. Uh, she loved Toronto, and she always wished there was a theater. She would always tell me about a theater in Tokyo or Hamburg or or Brussels that showed the most innovative, exciting new work that had a cafe that was filled with young people, that was alive every night with provocative conversation, that was the cultural hub of the city. And she felt strongly that Toronto was well served with classical theatre, with uh, revivals, with Broadway transfers, but it had neglected uh, the innovative work that we were excited about when we were kids. I have to be careful here because there's people from every theater in town, but, um, <laughs> but I agreed with her. And I know Rob Ford agreed too. I know, he's, I know that the Theater of the Absurd was a big influence on him. And I, I wish he was here today. Um, but uh, that's why I was excited when Franco told me about the new project. And um, I, I feel that it's an essential essential new building for the city. The theater center was always here, of course, and Tracy did tons of shows at the various theater centers, maybe the third, the fourth, and the fifth incarnation, uh, but it was always without a center, you know? That was the ironic thing. It was always homeless, and it was always like a gypsy wandering the streets. And now it finally has a home, uh, and the mandate for the theater center, you know, while other theater companies are sort of struggling to differentiate themselves, the theater center has always been about innovation and development and about dialogue with the community and internationally as well. And uh, I'm very proud to have a name associated with it and to give whatever small contribution I can give. Um, and so I thank you all, everyone who supported this uh, campaign so far. I thank you very much, everyone in the government and privately. Just. At at the end, if I can say a few words, a couple of people asked me, they saw this plaque for Beatrice Lily. This is also the Beatrice Lily building. I don't know if, if you know this. There's a plaque over here on the side, and Beatrice Lily was born in Devon, on Dover Court, and became probably the biggest, a huge star of the stage in, in the 20s and 30s, and the, the funniest woman in the world she was called. And it, is, it was funny when I first saw the plaque because when my friends and I were writing a little play we did called The Drowsy Chaperone, we always thought that she would have played the title role if it had been in the 20s and 30s. Um, and I tried to think what she would think to have a, a theater here. Uh, uh, she wasn't known for her avant-garde work, but she did have a provocative side. And, and I remembered this uh, Noel Coward song that she introduced on the stage in 1933 where she said, I've been to a marvelous party. I must say the fun was intense. We all had to do what people we knew would be doing a hundred years hence. So, it's almost a hundred years since she sang that, and um, it looks like the intense fun that she had predicted is finally going to happen here. Uh, so, I thank you all for making that a reality. So now the... Um the ground baking moment and I thought you know we can't get a sledgehammer because this is a heritage building it would send the wrong message so we are um, going to pass some hats I want to
pink that, one. That, that's nice, Frank. And I will get one. Um, Anyway, um, just to celebrate, <laughs> just oh, open it up, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, oh, there it is, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. To celebrate, <laughs> to celebrate and kick off our ground uh, breaking, we want to share uh, uh, and transformation this entire year. We want to share with you um, our our sort of interim branding. Um, but I uh, can we do the big reveal and the photo? <laughs> Join us across the street at the Drake Hotel for our private luncheon where we'll be making some key announcements about the campaign. And thank you, thank you so much for being here. It means a lot to me to see all of you here. the Drake. I'm going to ask you if you could uh, follow our uh, trusty officer um, and head over to the Drake now where we can continue chatting in a warm area with some free food. And I'm going to ask our board of directors if you could hang back for just a moment uh, for a quick photo. Thank you so much.